I want to take a, uh, a clean sheet of paper there to demonstrate the use of, uh, of this uh, straight edge. What this is, uh, I don't know if you can see the detail on it, but it is a, a T-square. It's the kind you get in the art supply store or, uh, or architectural students use them a lot. But I take the T off of it and I have a really nice, nice straight edge. To make this work, it's got to have some width to it. A little narrow ruler would not work. But the way this thing works is in order to draw a straight line, I use this in any position I need to draw on the on the paper and I tilt it up at about 45 degrees. And I can't lay it flat and run a brush against it because the paint would run under. But if I tilt it up, it's always off the paper. I hold my brush just like I would a pencil. Uh, now, I, when I say that, I realize that some people hold pencil different from the way I do. But I hold it like this and uh, I pull the uh, brush, the ferrule of the brush against the straight edge that's tilted up here, and then the back of my finger that's holding the brush rides on top of the straight edge, so I can draw that brush straight across, and I don't even have to look at it to know I'm getting a straight line. So it's very controlled by my back of my finger and, and pulling the ferrule tight against that. So let me show you on, uh, on a couple of lines. You can use any size brush you want to do that. We'll just start with a big brush, and we'll dip into some of this uh, stuff we have on the uh, on the palette. Let's use a, uh, a one inch flat brush. Now I didn't put a lot of pigment on there but you'll notice a very straight line. You look down there that's straight as an arrow because it's controlled by the position of the brush and the finger. Where you will find this useful is with little fine lines. So I can use either one of the rigger brushes or I like to use my number four brush. It doesn't hold as much pigment but it, it gives me a great deal of control. And if it's got too much moisture on it, you can look at the back of this until I, I kind of tap it with my brush to make sure there's not too much moisture on there. Or I can flatten the bristles so that they, uh, it'll draw a, a thin line. And I come across this like this. Again, if you look down this line, you, it's going to be a perfectly straight line. If I want to vary that line, I can... I can start with a thin line and then by pressing my brush down I can progressively get wider with the line. So you're going to find me using that with uh, opaque paint primarily in order to clean up edges or to get little textures in. For instance, the little, uh, little shadow lines on, between the sheets of metal on the roof, this would be an ideal way to do that.